Welcome to Leadership Series 2.0, a STEM to Innovate initiative. Leadership 2.0 is about empowering community members, inspire to learn from the guest members, and learn from their perspectives on leadership in their respective roles. True leaders lead by example. They wholeheartedly teach, passionately coach, influence with people, not over people, and continue to excite and inspire all. Stay tuned for the upcoming guest on STEM to Innovate's Leadership Series 2.0. Uh, welcome to Leadership Series. My name is Dr. Krishan, and uh, this is a Leadership Series 2.0 Roundup. Uh, we have been seeing for the entire year, we have been engaged with many individuals for all sorts of backgrounds on a very common topic of leadership, uh, leadership in any individual's respective roles. And that's what we have been doing. Uh, we've been focusing on just the very uh, concept of engaging individuals, uh, the whole purpose of Leadership Series 2.0 is about uh, empowering our community members, highlighting some of the wonderful things that are happening in just our own community, in our own backyard. Oftentimes we oversee some of those wonderful things happening and the, the whole point of this platform is to highlight some of that. And today we have very much uh, engaged audience, very powerful uh, group here with very much uh, amazing uh, contributions that we want to also listen to and listen to their personal narrative today. And that's what 2020 Leadership Roundup is going to be uh, focused upon today. Uh, and just, uh, just looking at from the point of view of what they're trying to achieve from the 2021 uh, point of view, and also um, what is it that uh, they want to share from the experiences that they have 
uh, in just this year as a roundup. So let's start adding individuals onto our uh, platform here, starting from KP George. Hi, KP George, how are you doing, Judge George? I cannot hear and can you hear me okay? Yes, yes, I can hear you can fine. You hear yes. Hello, can you hear me? Uh, I can hear you, yes. Hello, yes. good? Yeah, but I, if you cannot hear me, so I'm not sure if uh, we need to make sure that you're able to also. Good evening, I, I couldn't hear anything. I, I apologize, you know, I hope you could hear me. Um, good okay. evening, everyone, and um, it is absolutely an honor and um, pleasure to be <clears throat> in front of you. And I see that there is a long, um, um, you know, um, lineup, and there is so many wonderful people will be speaking about leadership and you know why you get involved and be part of all this discussion. What is going on in our country, and especially no time at all. Um, you know, I, I won't take too much time, but I just want you to know that this is so important, and we have to show our children um, it is important to get involved, and you have to lead by example. You have to show that, and so like I said before, and and we all are unique. We all are here for a reason. And, um, and I believe <clears throat> we would be able to uh, be part of, uh, you know, the, 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 the American mainstream and, you know, uh, letting, contributing, making our community a better place, continue to make it better. And that is what it's all uh, about. And I always said this, uh, it is uh, important. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, you, we get involved and I will, uh, I will, um, you know, my journey and I will talk about it. I know that this is a short uh, discussion. Uh, sure, time sure. Frame. So, um, you know, my journey was not an easy journey, but the thing about it is when you know uh, what you're doing, when you know why you're here and when you know your purpose is much bigger than you are. And that's when things happen in this world. And, and you know, when that's when you you hear somebody don't agree with you, still you know that your purpose is not changed. And so it is all about, we always say, getting out of the box. You know, we all are boxed in. And you know why it is important? Someone recently, uh, I heard saying that it is important to get out of the box you are placed in because you can only read the label when you're outside. Absolutely. I hope that makes sense. Thank and you, Kippy so George. That, um, so we'll, you know, we'll, we'll, I will come back and talk about it further. We'll, we'll definitely have our um, uh, narrative that we'll share. So let's uh, also add, uh, welcome Mr. Brian Milton. Thank you, our District Attorney, Fort Bend. I think you're on mute. Uh, thanks for joining in. And Thank I also want to have uh, Mr. Thahir, Zafar Thahir, Houston uh, Planner, uh, Commissioner of uh, Planning uh, Houston Airports, um, as well as for planning. Thanks for joining, and he's also an attorney. Um, Ms. Mansoor Nabila, how are you? She's also executive director of uh, Engage Texas. Thanks for joining in. And uh, Dr. Asim Shah, how are you? If you're on mute, thanks for joining in. Thank you, thanks for the invitation. All right, uh, he's a chief uh, psychiatry of Bentob and also executive director at uh, Baylor. Uh, all right, and Adi Lafter, thanks for joining in. You are uh, a very ind individual that has a very unique background also. Uh, we're gonna listen to you. Uh, you're also currently involved in uh, a direct, uh, as a board member in, uh, in one of the very in interesting committees of uh, Fort Bend, which is a criminal justice committee uh, for engagement. So thanks for uh, joining. I think you are one of the committee member of uh, Brian Middleton that leads. Is that correct? That's correct. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Thanks for joining. And also we have last but not least, uh, or actually two more individuals, uh, Mr. Yaffe, David Yaffe, principal of Clemens High School, Fort Bend Independent School District. Thanks for joining in. Thank and you, Sean. And our special appearance, uh, Dr. Omer Shah, who is actually in transition of Secretary of Washington for, for the Ministry of Health. So thanks for joining in. He's also currently uh, almost finishing up his last uh, few, few weeks here in Houston uh, at the Health uh, Department of Harris County. Thanks for joining in, appreciate that as a director Executive Director of Health in Health of uh, Harris County. So thanks for joining in. I uh, appreciate that. Um, everyone, everyone can hear me well. Is that correct? 
Just want to make sure. Okay, that's a thumbs up. Perfect. So today we are going want to engage into your personal narrative and really appreciate that everybody has uh, taken their busy time to come in and join this leadership series and the pr the purpose we have talked about earlier and this whole the whole point of engaging individuals. Oftentimes we are we just have no clue. We're so much busy and narrowed down in our approach to things that we do on a daily basis and we don't know what else is happening out there. So none of the individuals here uh, is requiring any particular introduction. We all are very familiar with the faces here and we're also very familiar with the contributions. Uh, so let's just hear one at a time uh, the personal narrative that we want to have for the Leadership 2020. Uh, this year has been very unique. We are we're seeing uh, it's a, one of the unique and interesting year uh, for many for many uh, angles if we look at it. Um, I've, I've, I personally have a wonderful year 2020 because I was able to spend a lot of time with my family. And that was one of the things that I was really uh, gra grateful about because uh, that's I was able to work from home. I know a lot of for individuals were not fortunate enough to do that, but I was able to do so. So that was really amazing for me in that aspect. As um, And then there are some things that I'll, I was able to keep my job. That, that was another thing that I'm very much grateful of. Um, and I know that there are individuals that have also lost jobs and their people have hit major crisis when it comes to financial gains and financial, uh, as part of the financial crisis that, um, you know, some of us have faced directly or indirectly impacted by COVID. Uh, the cases are still rising uh, and there are unfortunately a lot of, you know, death toll uh, that we've seen as of, you know, today we, we are still seeing a whole lot. Um, um, we're currently, and I mean, just to share some numbers, uh, 283,000, that's according to Google to, as of today, that's the toll rate, uh, that toll, and and 14.9 million cases of COVID. So uh, that's, you know, unfortunately, this is something where I have to sort of uh, still continue to, uh, uh, you know, face in some ways, uh, we have to still wear our masks, we still have to follow all our guidelines according to the CDC. So let's uh, let's hear your personal narratives. Uh, you know we have amazing backgrounds of here of folks, uh, and we want to really listen to the advice and the guidance that uh, that each individual is yet to share with us. So you know just to kind of break things to the ground, uh, we can start with uh, uh, Mr. Middleton, District Attorney of Fort Bend. So you have one minute to share your personal narrative. Uh, please tell us how what was your experience like for the year. Wow, you know, uh, 2020 started out with so much hope and expectation, uh, had a lot of plans, a lot of goals, and then COVID hit, and it changed a lot of things. Uh, and, you know, it slowed down a lot of things, but it also increased enlightenment, and we saw a lot of spiritual uh, development and advancement uh, that was needed and, and, and created a, a sort of a secondary growth and, and more opportunities. So I think it was directional. Um, you know, COVID came, COVID had its impact and was still suffering from it, but it did change the direction uh, of a lot of different things, you know, spirituality, government, uh, elections. And so I, I, I think it's been a, a year of substantial change, but a lot having to do with enlightenment and spiritual growth. That is correct. Well, thanks for that. Really appreciate that, uh, uh, Dr. Um, Mr. Middleton. Appreciate that. And uh, let's move on to Dr. Omer Shah. Uh, do you have a very much uh, unique perspectives, I'm pretty sure, with all sorts of experiences that you have had, specifically in Houston and Harris County? Yeah, Dr. Kishan, thanks, first of all, for having me. It's great to be on this panel with so many friends and 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 just, just great, great uh, leaders in their own right. Um, so I'm humbled to be a part of this. And I would say that that is probably what this year has taught me is humility. Um, I, I, yeah, I always uh, approach things with humility, but this year has been even more humbling than, than, than ever. Um, and it just reminds me of two things that my parents taught me was that uh, make sure that you do good and you do well. And this is what this year has really taught me is that they're not the same thing. You do well in that you hit it out of the park, you get straight A's, et cetera. 
but but do it for a purpose, a good purpose. And that's what all of us are involved in. And so uh, I think that is probably the biggest thing that I've taken away from this year. Thank you, Dr. Shah, appreciate that. Uh, and uh, Mr. Tahir, so far. Well, uh, Kashan, first of all, thank you so much for bringing this, this wonderful group together. And um, I'm honored. Uh, 2020 will go down as a year where humanity came down to, to its knees, literally. Uh, everything is turned upside down. Last year, if you had talked about spending $500 billion on some social program, uh, everybody would have looked at you like, what are you talking about? This world has spent over $12 trillion. So what if last year somebody had suggested, let's spend a trillion dollars on upgrading the healthcare system throughout the world? If we would have been better off. So there are new perspectives, there are new ideas. Um, life has become simpler and easier in some ways. We have gotten closer to our families. But this was also a year of a lot of political upheavals, elections, uh, right wing, uh, fascist kind of trends, a uh, lot of issues on which we had to take a stand. Leadership requires us to be not in popularity contest. That's what leaders had to do this year, and that's what they will have to do in future, is we cannot sit on the fence. You cannot be neutral. If you're neutral, you're neutered. Uh, you, you got to take a stand. You got to stick to your principles. That's what humanity is looking for. Leadership is not easy. It's not being in movies. It's not a popularity contest. Thank you for that personal narrative there, Mr. Tahir. I appreciate that intro there. And uh, Mr. Yafi. Thank you, Kashan, and thanks again for inviting me back. I really appreciate it, and I'm honored to be with the others on this panel tonight. I guess I would start by echoing a little bit of what Dr. Shaw said in, in finding certain joys in the things that we are doing. Uh, and, and the biggest one for me as on, on the happiness level has been really, in a certain sense, rediscovering the true joy of teamwork, of, of people coming together and empowering them to lead and to be creative and to make a difference and, and to feel their true impact on the organization. You know, it, one person, unless you're in a very, very small organization, cannot do it all. And certainly in a, in a large high school and a large school district, one principal cannot do everything, uh, nor should she or he. So that, that's been a, a big reward is, is, is finding that joy of, of teamwork with shared passions and, and then the reward of making good decisions and seeing the impact. For, for the school district and for, for myself at a high school, you know, we had to continue to stay focused on our number one mission. And that's being an, an, an educational institution and taking our kids forward. For us, you know, in a long career, it's, you know, one or two years or so. But for a kid, that one or two years is so critical. It's so critical in the child's development. So we had to realize how, how do we reinvent ourselves staying true to our, our goal as an educational institution, while at the same time doing it in a way that none of us were trained to do. In, in an online environment, for many kids, you know, at Clements, I have 80% of my kids are still online uh, by, by their own choice. So we still have to deliver the instruction, but yet we also now have to become technology experts and, and deliver instruction and engage with kids in a completely different way and we also have to become epidemiologists and learn all about contact tracing and, and dealing with this every single day. So th those are my big takeaways from this year that's not quite over yet. Thank you for that, Mr. Yafi. I really appreciate it. And uh, moving on to uh, Nabila Mansour. Yeah, uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Kashan, for having me here with this esteemed panel. Very honored to be here. Um, you know, echoing from some of what the principal said, my daughter actually goes to Clements. I had a daughter that graduated from Clements last year. Um, Y'all have to do a lot. And I think this idea of thinking outside the box, uh, dealing with these challenges and trying to figure out how we're going to overcome them 
in a world uh, where there is a pandemic going on has has been my my kind of my big lesson. You know, we have to start being creative. Um, I think in in times of crisis, that's when real leadership uh, comes to the forefront. And uh, personally, for me, it was the year where we started off with a lot of plans. This was going to be an election year. We were going to make sure every single person was going to be counted in the census. Mm -hmm. And then the pandemic hit and all of those plans had to be um, kind of thrown in the air and let's start over and, and rethink them. And, um, and working with our colleagues, working with others, uh, making sure that we can still uh, get the word out on those issues we think are important, um, but do it in a way that's safe uh, is, was my big lesson is that we, we can never just take anything for granted and we have to be able to kind of pivot on a moment's notice um, and, and work with others to make sure we accomplish whatever it is that we've set out to accomplish. Thank you for that, Nabila Mansour. On to uh, Judge George. You know, um, <clears throat> Kushan, I just wanted to say, I didn't hear a word you were saying before. I don't know what did I, what did I answer to you. I, I hope that, <laughs> that, but I tell you this, 2020 was an amazing year. And, you know, it's all how you look at it. I tell you, I am a better person today than 10 months ago. Simple reason I have seen, <clears throat> I don't know how many of you read that book called Man Search for Meaning. You know, people put under the same circumstances behaving extremely different. That's what I saw. Nasty people coming out from some places, but then putting everything on the side. I <clears throat> like like restaurants are going out of business, but they're cooking food, bringing it to the uh, law enforcement officers uh, and also our our hospital workers. And you know the 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 family getting together and putting everything on the side, saying let's show some masks. And people brought like three, four, five thousand masks you know, so on in the house. And so bringing all this stuff. And so I have seen both. And I, I am, like I said, I am a better person today than 10 months ago because I was able to experience kindness. And I was able to experience people all of a sudden thinking, you know, it is, this is all happening, um, you know, bigger than me. And, and also I will conclude saying this, you know what? Um, yeah, the purpose always um, should be bigger than us. And, and I think God, brought that upon us and said, hey, you think about it. We are afraid of something. We don't even know what it is and what it looked like, what it smelled like. But we know that it is very much here. It could kill you. And and we all are afraid. And so to me, I just wanted to say, um, I just wanted to thank God for putting me in the middle of all this. And um, I'm, I'm very thankful to God. And I know that challenging, you know, I cannot say we have around 325 people lost life in Fort Bend County. I cannot tell them, oh, it was a good year. No. And their, and their loved one's life have changed forever. And so my heart goes out to them. And there are hundreds of people in hospitals. Um, you know, you, you rightfully mentioned our numbers are going up. I'm seriously looking into changing our threat level. And I know that people are going to come swinging at me for that. And so I have to be prepared. prepared. So again, I am so thankful. I'm so blessed. And I thank God every single day. Thank you for that, Judge George. Appreciate that uh, narrative there. And uh, on to Adila Thir. Yeah, once again, thanks, uh, uh, Kashan. So, you know, this is, it was a year of uncertainty, anxiety, and, you know, ambiguity, ambiguity. And just giving you perspective as a uh, uh, board member on the, uh, the Fort Bend County Citizens Engagement Group uh, that was created in conjunction with uh, our district attorney's office, Fort Bend County. Brian Milton and the Department of Justice. Uh, you know, one of our key missions is building bridges between diverse groups of citizenry, right? And and the entire ecosystem that we operate within. And that includes law enforcement, includes schools. So, you know, I think looking back, what 2020 may have done is, is it exposed a lot of fractures uh, in our society. Uh, it didn't create the fractures. I think the fractures were probably, you know, they were always there, but it brought them up to the surface and that I think is what leadership has to be really cognizant of uh, moving forward. So, you know, for instance, 2020 didn't create civil unrest, but we had civil unrest like when the George Floyd 
uh, incident, the murder took place, it was in the shadows of the pandemic. It was in the shadow of huge job losses. It, it's an election year. Um, with all of us going online, uh, you know, I'm sure uh, Mr. Yaffe would uh, know all about this. It's how we interact with each other. Uh, that's completely changed. Misinformation and disinformation being out there. That's a huge issue. You know, how diverse groups of people interact with each other, that's completely changed. So the bottom line uh, in a year like 2020 is people look to leaders. I look to my leaders, uh, many of whom are on this panel right here, uh, for a sense of calm, right? And for a sense of safety and protection. Uh, you know, like just here on this panel, uh, you know, watching Dr. Shah, uh, Dr. Amar Shah coming up and, and, and talking about the pandemic and what was needed. Judge KP George, uh, you know, showing his le leadership in my county. Uh, Brian Middleton, you know, and, and, and how we were all going to stay safe. We're all home now. And, and, you know, how do we protect ourselves? So I think that's the biggest thing that I got out of it. And, and certainly that's what I pick up as a leader that I think that now you have to project calm and you have to pro project a sense of, you know, we're in this together. You know, and it's going to be it's going to be OK. And some of the best leaders were the ones that can uh, project that. Thank you for that, Adil Akhtar. Really appreciate that. And on to Dr. Asim Shah. Thank you, um, Prashan. Um, and thank you for including me in this uh, panel. I'm humbled. Uh, 2020 has taught us, of course, numerous things, and everybody has mentioned a lot of those. But one thing which I think is that it has really and truly made us realize and thank our blessings. People didn't realize that it is a blessing to be able to even see people, to go in to places, to eat out and think simple things which we never thought, even to wear nice clothes because when you're at home, you can wear the same clothes all the time. So that has been really a big thing of 2020. Resilience, we have been, uh, it is proven that now we are very resilient and we have been able to do so many things in 2020. It is also a year of humility, like Umair mentioned, but also a year of social media. Another thing which 2020 has done is it has made us realize socialization is extremely important because in this year we have heard the uh, term social distancing over and over and over again, but we haven't heard the term loneliness and people are feeling lonely. That is the reason we know socialization is extremely important for people, but we took it for granted. We never realized that that could be a blessing. It is a blessing. Now we know that. Um, also 2020, as uh, Adil mentioned, calmness. People, it, it is uh, art to be calm in such an era of uncertainty because everything is uncertain about 2020. Even the CDC guidelines change every few weeks, every few months, everything changes. So there's a lot of uncertainty. And if you are calm with all this, that is an art. And lastly, as a psychiatrist, I always talk about hope. That's my job actually. So, but it is a year of hope now because look at December. Next week, vaccine will be out. That is hope. Uh, the following week, a second vaccine will be out. That's more hope. So there is hope. And while we have struggled throughout the year and uh, it has made us realize uh, and thank our blessing, it has made us more uh, understand more humility and made us more resilient, we see hope and we are looking for a brighter future. Hopefully 2021 would not be 2020. There is no year which can be 2020. So I think that is the take home that hope is there and good news is around the corner. Thank you for that. So that was an amazing personal narrative from each individual on the year 2020. And now we're gonna take this uh, conversation forward. Uh, so from 5.30 to 5.45 in the next 15 minutes, I want to engage all of you in our very much conversation regarding what is that you are trying to achieve um, from 2021 um, and what is it that we all expect from 2021 and that aspect we you know just looking at just this year 2020 uh, you know we quickly learned that it, it's we need each other when human need each other we, we depend upon each other businesses depend on each other uh, all walks of life, uh, we are already as part of uh, this ecosystem that we're in. We know that we we have a much, a much impact on each other in all aspects. So um, from that point of view, um, you know, it's about as a leader, when we are in the community together, it's about serving at the same time. It's about servant leadership. 
So servant leadership, not just walking the talk, anyone can talk, but we got to be able to walk the talk and, and, and not just give up on being the role model. So some of the responses that we learned and we were, we heard in the, this year, 2020 was that the common responses that I have from every individual that I was uh, engaged in our leadership series was that, we have to be role model first at home. We, we have to start from our home first. We got to check up on our neighbors. We have to check uh, on, it's about others first. It's not about me. So just from that point of view, what is your take from what is it that you're trying to achieve from the 2021? Uh, we, there are a lot of business, businesses that are still struggling. There are financial losses, individuals that have lost jobs, uh, folks that have lost families. Uh, what are we going to do differently? How are we going to continue uh, be the leader and just continue to wear uh, not just wear the hat, but actually walk that talk and 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 be the server leader in that aspect? Um, so, what is it that your take uh, on 2021 is? And I would like to uh, leave the floor to any individual who wants to, to you know take a stab at this. Uh, I'll go first. Perfect. Thank you, Mr. Uh, look. Leadership is making right decisions, but making decisions. Uh, KP George may have to decide to increase the threat level. Umar Shah may come out in one of his press conferences and deliver the news as it is. You know, it may require restraining ourselves. Uh, you cannot make decisions that are popular. You cannot be in leadership if you are going to hide behind this persona of leadership. Leadership, I think, requires tackling the facts. And it's responsibility of leaders, all of us, not just elected officials, to bring out the facts to the communities that we serve. Communities deserve information and then allow them to make decisions. One thing we have learned in this is, the president at the top was not delivering the facts and he was able to change the mindset of this country and we are facing the consequences of that. And we saw it at the local uh, level also. You know, the Muslim American community got involved in politics and they grappled with difficult and different issues and they, they managed to educate themselves, distribute the information. Uh, I think moving forward in 2021, I would like us to look at the world in a simpler, more realistic manner. Life is very fragile. Health is something that we have taken for granted. It is not. I think we need to be counting our blessings. I would like us to focus on simpler facts to make us all move forward. But it's important that we have leaders who show strength and show spine. The, the time for that, that show that Trump used to put on every night is over. CNN and Fox can now go back to reporting news and not just the drama. I can go to ask Kashan if you want. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks you for that, Mr. Thayer. Really appreciate that. Uh, a very interesting take that and uh, what you're mentioning in regards to what you're achieving from 2021 as collectively. Uh, Dr. Ashag, please go ahead. So 2020, like, like Zafar I mentioned, uh, leaders need to make decisions, but all the leaders, the, the thing is that lead, decisions are difficult and leaders, a good leader is the one who is able to make difficult decisions. If all the decisions are simple, then it wouldn't be a problem. But a lot of decisions and most of the decisions are difficult. They may have negative consequences, but as a leader, you have to do that. Uh, and that is the beauty about that, that if you're able to make difficult decisions, you can do that. I'm not going to go into politics, but if you, if you think about it, what we have realized in 2020 that our healthcare system is definitely broken in many ways. Kumair is there and he can say more than anybody else. We don't spend a lot on preventive health. We don't spend a lot on mental health. We don't spend money where we need to spend. And that is something which should be an eye opener for us. And we need to realize and do more on that aspect. 2020 is a year in which whatever we have gathered, whatever shortcomings we have noticed, it is time for us 
to look back and correct those things. That's what a good leader would always do, and that's what we need to do. Excellent. Thanks for that, Dr. Shah. What is your takeaway, Mr. Yafi? I know with all the juggling and, uh, you know, school leadership is not easy. And, you know, one of the things that we were talking about earlier, you know, I've never seen a school administrator working from home before. That That is a pretty uh, interesting year, I'm pretty sure, for Mr. Yafi. And I know you probably are working from home and maybe hybrid in many ways. Uh, but uh, what is your... Uh, Take away in for 2021, what are we going to be doing differently in that aspect? Well, so many, so many things. Uh, first of all, I am home right at this moment, but I, I am not working from home. I'm at school every, every day. As a matter of fact, this is the first day in a very long time I, I was home before it was dark. But um, no, I, I am at school um, every day and, and happy to be there, actually. Uh, very happy to be there. My, my takeaway from, from thinking purely of, of the, from the nonprofit and specifically from the educational standpoint is mm -hmm. we have to find the best of what we have learned from this experience and carry it forward. You know, mm -hmm. 2021 will hopefully be better, but I don't think anybody's under any illusion that when January 1st rolls around, we're going to have uh, vaccines everywhere and all the kids are coming back to school. Uh, at Clements, only about another 120 or so kids have elected to come back to the building. So I'm thinking the next school year, 2021 to 2022, the flexibility that uh, families and students have gained from online learning in for many kids is a huge positive. And it's a positive for different kids for different reasons. But I think that is something that, that public schools will have to embrace. Uh, because people want flexibility, they want options, they want personalization. So we have to take the best of everything we've learned from online learning and, and incorporate it into who we are as a public school system so that kids can have the choices that are best for them and best for their families. Uh, and, and that, again, that's different for every kid in, in different ways. But this also means that we have to prepare the students to be online learners. And we also have to prepare the teachers. And when, before you can prepare the teacher, you have to hire the teacher. So we are re-examining everything as we move into springtime and we'll move into the hiring season of what type of people do we need to look for to come into our system now that are best for our students in this new world in which we live. <clears throat> Thank you for that. Uh... Really appreciate that, Mr. Yafi. Uh, really interesting. You know, uh, this this pandemic has really where we were. If, if we were uh, looking at from all lenses and have a vision, I think this should have really helped us identify so many opportunities for innovation. And we quickly learned that um, that you know, we don't have to be at, at in in the cubicle stuck and working, especially in the corporate world. We can still deliver while we're uh, while we're at home. And that, and many uh, corporate entities, uh, even the school systems, now looking at, you know, how do we go about for the next year, uh, from the hybrid point of view, that uh, you, we can still deliver while we're working from home. So that's one of the things that I, uh, I, uh, I learned as well that I work in the corporate world, and and um, you know they're adjusting for the next year. So how about you guys on that takeaway? Um, and Mr. Ferguson, thanks for joining, and I know that you were. Just coming out of the Sugarland Council meeting, and that's why Noshat Kermali, who's also Sugarland Council member, wasn't able to uh, come today due to a little conflict there. But thanks uh, to the leadership series round up. Well, I'm I'm certainly uh, honored to be here. Uh, the presence of leaders that I've been listening to the last few minutes. You certainly don't need me. You've got some great leaders on panel already. I can assure you. Uh, we were actually uh, hosting a Zoom with area uh, students, and every council member had an obligation, uh, not just uh, uh, because, um, I don't know, we had a free calendar. We had an obligation to the children of our community to answer their questions and be a part of them transitioning one day into our leadership roles, and that's what we did the last few minutes. Mr. Ferguson, really, really appreciate that. 
So just uh, we're right here trying to engage in this conversation of what is it that we're achieving uh, collectively? What are what do we expect? What are the next steps in 2021 uh, from the leadership point of view? So uh, please feel free to I, jump in. I, and, uh, yes, Mr. George. Yeah, I I tell you this um, absolutely. It is it is wonderful, and what we have learned. Um, uh, this year um, is going to be a powerful effort. We could take it to the next year and beyond. And maybe, you know, when was the last time something like this happened to us uh, 100 years ago? And one good thing is, you know, nobody out there saying that or been there, done that, you know, like nobody there. So, so we are navigating, we all are novice and we are navigating through this um, pandemic. But I tell you this, <clears throat> in the middle of this whole thing, we did a number of things as far as leadership is concerned. And, you know, we brought a number of our children together. Um, you know, we we divided them, them into different groups and asked them to go navigate certain issues pressing for them. And, you know, we started this because um, after George Floyd um, situation, you know, a lot of young people were angry, you know, angry and and they cannot even believe what is going on around them and i we said okay let's do something about it and so uh, thanks to um, our da brian middleton and many of you might have be part of that uh, thing and you know but at the end they came back with a lot of presentation things they picked up uh, you know body camera mental health issues and and so many things and i was just i was just amazed by our children's ability to learn and understand the thing situation and they are they are much smarter and their information is actually information is on their fingertip they could find it and one thing um so there's a lot of things we were able to do in the middle of all this stuff and i also i just wanted to say i wanted to um uh, uh, you know i agree with the uh, uh, dr yafi you know we uh, during this last eight, last um, eight nine months every day we worked uh, absolutely did work and and so what we learned from this year is going to be so valuable taking it to the next year and beyond and sitting down and also all of a sudden we started valuing our life you know how you're doing when somebody asks you a question um, I say better than I deserve because 278 almost 280,000 people in our country cannot say that anymore and so, so that means we all are so blessed. We all are healthy. We all are here talking um, about, um, you know, how we move forward. And, and definitely I have no question. See, you know what I'm struggling right now? How do I tell people in Fort Bend County, we, I have to elevate uh, the threat level? Because I know that some people are not going to be happy about it. And so, and so uh, we are there. And we are actually, I had, a, I had before an hour ago, we had a meeting with our health and human services director and office of emergency management. And all we are, we are coming together and saying, how do we, how do we um, put this message out? But we have to. And I tell you, we, somebody talking about, you know, how do you make this decision? I, I always sit down and think, can I, I, I believe in God and I, I, I pray to God every single day. And I always ask this question. You know, maybe some people are not going to agree with me. Some people are going to agree with me. But can I explain in front of my God when I sit down and pray my decision? Can I explain to him? And that's what I took as a guiding path. And I it really helped me in that direction. And I will we will make tough decisions. And because it is about our citizens and our uh, people who rely on what we are trying to do. Uh, people rely on this information and make decisions based on that. So uh, once again, I just wanted to say that anytime we make a decision, it's all going to be, um, you know, fact based. And also we, we um, um, uh, you know, use science data and we listen to experts. And that's how we make the decision. And most cases, or almost all the time, that is the right direction uh, to take. But uh, 2021, I tell you, there is a lot of wonderful things that are going to happen. We are already talking about bringing some businesses to Fort Bend County and 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 encouraging and empowering our businesses and maybe another leadership program with our young people, a volunteership with our young people. So investing in our young people, there's a lot of things we're planning to do. Very excited about um, 2021. 
Hey, Kashan. Thanks for that perspective. Really appreciate that. Uh, Deal. go ahead. Yeah, no, I think uh, our panel hit on, on a lot of great points, you know, and, and I think one point that I do want to bring up looking into uh, 2021 and beyond, and we've seen a lot of this, and I think it's, I personally think it's probably the biggest cancer that our society faces right now, and that's uh, the spread of misinformation and, you know, just disinformation, lies, and uh, it is, it's everywhere. It, it's very difficult to combat. And uh, so I work in the field of communications and when when I'm consulting with, with other leaders and, and attorneys and, and professionals, one of the things that, you know, we always come around to is, for one, at this point in time, obviously, you know, we talk about ambiguity and, and uncertainty and stress. And so of course that sense of calm, but also, you know, Judge, uh, uh, Judge KP hit on this, when decisions are made in, in a way that's firm and, and you know, you've just kind of come down to it and you've, you've discussed it with the experts, the subject matter experts, and you just, you communicate it and you do it succinctly and you do it in a way that's absolutely firm, that helps. And, and so, you know, when we talk about uh, building bridges between uh, community members and between uh, the citizens and, and law enforcement, I think everything comes down to those bridges have to be short. Right, they have to be uh, simple, and you know that you know we have to kind of cut the fluff out of how we communicate with each other, how we deal with each other, and uh, that's how we're going to kind of pick through uh, so much of the misinformation and that that's coming through, because we have to come together and we have to make sense of it. We have to start relying on on experts in their fields. Um, you know, so, you know, if, if I turn to education, I'm going to turn to to you, Dr. Kashan, or to, to Mr. Yaffe. If, you know, if it's medicine, I'm going to talk uh, to, to one of the our two Dr. Shahs, right? So, um, and just about everything else I talked to William Ferguson about. So, <laughs> so but that that's how it's going to be, uh, I think, moving forward. And, uh, you know, that would be my bit of advice to everybody, even how we deal with each other, uh, make it short, simple, and and CRISPR. Excellent, thanks, thanks. You know, Kashan, Kashan, Adil said something very profound that we should all learn from 2022. It is the role that misinformation and disinformation has played even at the highest level coming from White House. And, and the only way to really cut it down to, to facts and present it to people is to be able to go to the experts you know, rely on education, rely on experience. If you look at some of the misinformation that was coming out of White House from these so-called experts, they were not experts. You know, even at local level, when we have disinformation, I urge all leaders to rely on individuals, people and institutions that have the knowledge, that have the expertise, that have the history. If you find somebody saying something or delivering so-called facts, check their own background, check their own credibility, uh, maybe go do a background check on them. Uh, and it would be very easy to dissect that before they become institutions, before they become personalities, before people start following them. That's what I do. I tell people, you know, you have facts coming from somebody, Send me some money or I'll do it for you. Run a background check on people. Brian Middleton knows that. How easy it is for us to, to find out where is this information coming from? And, and from local Fort Bend level elections all the way to national level, it was very easy to sit down in a civil manner and cut through the crap. And for that, you need leaders who are willing to make tough decisions and get to the facts. It's easy, but if you don't address it on time, it becomes a problem. And Trump is the example in front of us. Thanks, thanks for that, Mr. Tahir. Really appreciate that. Anybody want else want to add? What is it that they're achieving from want to achieve from 2021 collectively as leaders? Yeah, I, I'll jump in here. You know, one of the things, and just listening to all the speakers, and one of the things is evident is that, you know. It's important as leaders is that we try to do what's right. Uh, if we're doing what's right, people will follow you. 
Uh, the people who don't follow you obviously have a different purpose, a different intent uh, in a different direction than what's best for our community. So it's important for us as leaders to make sure we're doing what's right. And it goes to information and in, in using uh, best practices, using uh, expert opinion, relying on, on, on unbiased information to make decisions. And so, you know, 2020, you know, we, we, I think we discovered that we have more in common uh, than we have differences. And we need to build on this heightened awareness, this, this uh, enlightenment, and, and try to restore humanity into a lot of processes, including law enforcement uh, and, and government, and ensure that people's rights are being protected. I mean, we had several watershed moments during 2020, and we need to use this opportunity uh, of enhanced enlightenment to make policy decisions that will protect humanity and continue to build on our communities and our unity. Okay, thank you. Well, Kashan, let me let me just jump in. First of all, I'm I'm just again humbled to just listen to everybody. I've I've been actually listening for the last you know half an hour, forty minutes. I'm just amazed by I'm learning a lot of of just uh, what what leadership is just by by listening to others. And um, this is going to be, for me, 2021 is going to be a very unique year, as you can imagine, um, uh, for a couple of reasons. One that I've, I've described, uh, first of all, I'm a, I'm a big proponent of uh, metaphors and analogies. If you know me, you know me that I always come up with something that's just way out there and, and I try to apply it to things. So I see this as uh, 2020 was the first half of a football game. Or a football match, if you're if you're truly football, um, and this is halftime that we're hitting the holidays here, and uh, what we do during these holidays will actually determine how we approach the second half, which is 2021. If we do this well, uh, we will be successful as a community and fighting this pandemic and doing all the things that need to be done in order to set ourselves up for when the cavalry arrives which is around the corner with vaccines in 2021, the second half. But if we do not do it well, unfortunately, we're going to have more people that are going to get sick, more people that are going to get hospitalized, and unfortunately, more people that are going to have uh, bad, bad, bad outcomes. So that's the first way I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it is, is setting it apart in those two, two halves. But the second way I'm looking at it is that from a professional standpoint, as you know, I'm leaving, right? So it's also bittersweet here. So I've been here for the first half and actually for 16 and a half plus years of service to Harris County in Texas. And, and now I'm, I'm seeing this, this, you know, in a very bittersweet moment as I'm seeing friends and family and just amazing folks that, you know, I almost want to, um, I've been crying a lot the last two weeks. So I want to cry again as I'm hearing all of you speak because I, I it, it, it touches me to know that so many of you have, continue to have your heart in the right place as we approach the second half. And I won't be around for that journey. Now, I'm uh, KP and I talked about this uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, and he's been such an incredible supporter and such a leader. I'll tell you is that I will be the biggest fan for this community and this set of communities in this state. You know, I'm going to be from afar cheering Harris County and Fort Bend and Galveston, everyone on as, as best I can. But I will tell you that I, it's, it's going to be very different to be going to a completely different environment where you don't know the people. They're very welcoming. They're obviously wanting my expertise, my experience. But um, to take that role on in the midst of a pandemic, uh, to go 3,000 miles across the country and to go from a local to state level is 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 a is a big adjustment it's a big transition and big transformation yet i'm i have incredible amount of solace in the fact that who i'm leaving behind are an incredible team incredible community and incredible leaders that are on this on this webinar right now people that are going to carry the ball and going to run in that second half and make sure that you know we actually get to the end and we and we win and the enemy is not ourselves as as Zafar Dahir had said, the enemy are, is this virus, this horrific virus that, that we, uh, again, a metaphor, I talk about um, 
Independence Day with, um, you know, as you as you know, uh, that was a that was a, a movie uh, with Will Smith. And I think of this like that, that instead of fighting each other, we should be on those planes going up to the aliens and fighting the aliens. And that's the virus. And yet what we have forgotten is that we as Americans, as humans, that we need to come together. And that is what I'm hoping for is happens in 2021. And so I just wanted to share those couple of perspectives and just incredibly humbled to listen to everybody because you you all are amazing. And again, I hope we can continue to call each other friends. And who knows, I may be back in Texas at some point sometime soon uh, wow. when KP, KP runs for governor. Uh, we'll see how that all works out, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Dr. Shah, you know what? Uh, that's a whole different discussion, but Dr. Shah, you're going to Washington to get experience. By the time you're ready, Texas will be ready for you. you come back. <laughs> <laughs> well, certainly not Dr. Shah for sure, Omer Shah for, with all the awesome contributions. Uh, thanks for that. Uh, so we're almost to the end of our uh, panel, and we want to listen to the final concluding remarks from each individual. Uh, Nabil Mansur, you've been very quiet. Uh, you have. Let, we'll start from you with the, your final concluding remarks. Sure. Well, uh, Umer, that was beautiful. And uh, just so happy to be on this panel with you uh, in your last parting days. Um, and I think what you said and what everyone else on our panel said uh, goes to what I think is the most important lesson that uh, one of the most important lessons we can take into 2021. And that's this idea of caring deeply, whatever it is that is your uh, issue, to continue to do that. And when you care deeply about something, it also means that you open up your heart to getting broken. Uh, a lot of us have had that, you know, when we're, we, 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 we care about something so much, um, and you put your heart, you put your effort into it and it doesn't work out. So I think the lesson for me is to uh, continue to care deeply uh, when my heart gets broken, to get up and then continue to just keep doing the work um, and staying on that path. Because that is what leadership is, that you you don't give up, you keep going um, and you continue to work with others, trying to make wherever you are, whatever community you, you live in, trying to make it better. So for me, it's uh, 2021 is all about continuing that journey about making sure that we are kind to one another, that we are there for each other, that we are building our community up, and we are continuing to um, care deeply about the issues that are most important to us and doing whatever it is we need to to make that happen. Thank you for that, Nabila. Appreciate that. Concluding remarks, uh, we'll start with Mr. Yaffe. Uh, Mr. Yaffe, yes. Um, I, I would say relationships that would be my final my final piece um, is to, so, so much of really every, all of us, our, our respective careers are, are based on relationships and based on people. And we have to keep those that are near and dear to us close and to empower them as part of our leadership, that makes us all better. But I, I would say we have to leave room for those that think differently uh, because isolating people that think differently, even, even if we know they're wrong and our, our minds um, for, from, from the true sense of right and wrong in, in a justice sense, we don't wanna isolate people. Because when we isolate people, they feel they have no hope and they have no place. And that, that leads to a lot of uh, dark alleys. So I'd say keep our relationships close with those that are near and dear, but leave a little room for those that think differently because we can all learn from each other. Excellent, thanks for that. Find a concluding remarks that be left there. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, there's not uh, a ton I can add, uh, but you know, I was just thinking right now and uh, uh, you know, some of Amara's words were, making me think back to a lot of uh, fond memories that I've had, uh, you know, with Omer, who's, who's one of my closest and dearest friends and uh, and somebody I look up to as a leader. And, you know, I, I think you can combine those two. Uh, you know, everybody on this panel, you know, is, is a friend uh, who I made over 13 years being in Fort Bend County. And, and sometimes we've agreed and sometimes we've fought and sometimes, 
you know, but you have to give yourself, everybody has to give themselves a chance to, to, to fail uh, sometimes and to, to, to maybe do something that didn't work out and, and others have to give you that chance uh, to make, uh, you know, a mistake now and then, but then you, you know, you learn from it, you grow from it, you come back. Uh, but I think the final thing I would just say is, is uh, appreciation, you know, hope is built off of appreciating what you have. And, um, you know, I saw this picture earlier today uh, and it had, you know, one of the things it said, it showed a picture of uh, Cinderella's castle at Disney World. And it said, you know, Disney has lost its magic. You know, you know, we're talking about the pandemic and, uh, you know, I took my family. We went to Disney World like two months before uh, lockdown began. So it was right before the pandemic. And I was just thinking back to it and I was appreciating what that was. Right. Like we take it for granted. We take we take so much for granted. And, and uh, moving into 2021, things will get better. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. And uh, I hope that we uh, learn from everything that's happened this year. Give one another a chance to build understanding, you know, and then we'll, we'll take it from there and we'll take it from there together. Excellent, Adila. I appreciate those concluding remarks. On to KP George. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Kishan. Um, I just wanted to say, first of all, all this wonderful people um, in this panel, on this panel, I mean, um, you know, and, and so it's an honor to be here. And I learned one thing. Um, if you consider yourself a leader, uh, try to empower people around you, unlike you see, unlike what you're seeing these days, you know, try to empower the people around you. And, and you are, if you deserve empowerment, it will come to you. And that's what I learned. And, and, and Houston Chronicle recently did and, um, you know, asked me a question, you know, what is the best thing ever happened to you in this journey? It was not easy. Um, and I always tell people I had much more hair before, like two years ago. And so, um, you know, so, you know, what is the best thing happened to me? I met so many wonderful people. Otherwise, I have no reason to meet. If, it, if I wasn't doing this, uh, I met so many people, maybe I never meet. And, and that is the best thing happened to me. And, and I, like I said, I know that, you know, uh, I use my faith uh, a lot when, when I try to combat some of these issues. Um, and I pray about it. And I, I pray about bringing right people in front of me. And, and, and God did that. Always he did that. He is bringing right people. Uh, in front of me, and 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 so I just pray. I just uh, um, you know, you know, uh, pray. You know, the people around me be safe and uh, wonderful. And and I know that 2021 and beyond, things will get better. And also, I remember listening to a motivational speech. He said, "Challenges are opportunities." And you know, because of COVID, I think a lot of people, all of us, are better people. And that actually bring opportunity. And, and in my case, that's what happened. So I just, um, you know, um, in this journey, and I, I want your love and I want your prayers, you know, so that I could make the right decision for the people, almost 850,000 people of Fort Bend County and continue to uh, grow. And, you know, so, and we are going to be okay. And, I, and my promise to those who are listening to me, if you're part of Fort Bend and I will do everything possible, in my power to make Fort Bend County continue to be a better place for for not just for us, our children and also generations to come. Thank you. Excellent. On to uh, Brian Middleton. You know, there's a saying that no man's an island, you know, and I, I will always remember the isolation that we felt when we had the quarantine uh, in 2020. And in that moment, how we felt that isolation, which led to our sense of humanity. Uh, and then when we went through the different CDC protocols, it, you know, the, the, the fragile nature of our health, all I think brought us closer to who we are in our humanity. I think a lot of times people are defined by what they have and not how they believe or uh, how they feel. And I think there was a lot of growth spiritually uh, in our communities 
uh, during 2020. And so there's another saying that there's no pain, uh, no gain. What is it? No pain, no gain. And, and you think about all the pain that was derived from the national politics and all the rhetoric. And I think that we will look back on this painful year and discover that we had a lot of gains uh, because we are much more tolerant, uh, have a deeper understanding and appreciation of humanity. Uh, we're a lot cleaner, neater, and healthier as a result of the pandemic. So I think we will see after having gone through this painful experience that we're all better off and better together. Excellent. Thanks for that. Down to Zafatahir, your final concluding remarks. Uh, Kashan, first of all, thank you so much and for, for, for this STEM uh, initiative. Uh, as much as this year was about being calm and be going back to basics, this was also a year of a lot of controversy and politics and misinformation. And I'm reminded of Nelson Mandela's approach towards that, you know, after being incarcerated for so many years, he came out with a wonderful approach, which was truth and reconciliation. All the leaders must grapple with the truth, because if you don't, then you are being in unjust. You are not delivering justice to those who have been wronged. So it is important to stand with the truth and make sure the truth wins and truth is evident and truth is known to the world. But then work towards reconciliation. You know, reconciliation without truth is going to be hollow and that reconciliation is not going to go on and it will fall apart. On the other hand, just plain truth and driving justice down somebody's throat is going to be very harsh if you don't have capacity for reconciliation. So my parting note would be that all of us leaders must learn from somebody who was incarcerated for so long and came out with a wonderful formula called truth and reconciliation. And that applies from Fort Bend to White House to any international dispute that may be in Middle East or South Asia or, or controversies in Brazil or Brexit. Truth and reconciliation is the only way for humanity to move forward. Thank you for that concluding remarks, Mr. Tahir. On to Dr. Asim Shah. Thank you. Um, thank you for this wonderful initiative. Everything is already um, discussed and talked, but I think what 2020 has done to us, which we didn't talk so far, is polarization. 2020 has been perhaps one of the most polarizing years in many ways. Uh, simple things like masking has become political. Uh, health has become political, which has never been the case. I think what we should hope and hopefully plan to do in 2021 is to unite and make all these things like health are so non-political because health cannot be political. That, that's, that's just completely unimaginable, at least in my mind. That's one thing we need to hope for, hopefully for next year. And the other thing is 2020 has made us realize, and like somebody mentioned that we are more cleaner, more neater, which is great. But also it made us realize that we can be socially connected with each other very well with being physically distanced. And we need to continue to do that because again, socialized isolation is a problem, but we can socialize with people by being physically distant and continue our journey and continue to communicate with each other. Best of luck for everyone for 2021. Thank you for that, Dr. Asim Shah, for those uh, great uh, reminders. And uh, thank you. Uh, so we have uh, Mr. Ferguson, your, your concluding thoughts. Wow, uh, what a group. Uh, what, a, what a mature, wise group to sit in on. I thank each and every one of you for your leadership to our community. I uh, do want to offer some good news. While I sat with the young people on Zoom a little earlier before this conversation, uh, one of the lead questions that was asked by a young man in our community, he said, with the considering the divisiveness in our nation, he said, uh, Councilman Ferguson, how do we fix it? 
That was his precious, kind, how do we fix the division? And so my response to him, going back to what almost every single one of you just said is, first, we have to lead by example and serve others first. Uh, things that may not uh, make us happy or make us happy needs to be second to our community, our neighbors, our empathy for our community. And we need to pull each other together with a sense of hope. This is not our first pandemic in America. But guess what? Thankfully, this is probably the first pandemic that we as individual leaders have had the uh, had the steering wheel. And so we need to look into our history and see how things were handled, look to our wisdom, look to our neighbors, and we need to offer hope to our children that we're going to get to this, get through this strong and as powerfully as ever before, because we are a great nation of great people and we will overcome this together. So God bless you all for being a part of this. Uh, thank you. On to uh, last but not least, uh, Dr. Omer Shah. Thank. First of all, thank you, uh, Kashan, for for having us. And and again, I I just can't underscore enough about everybody has said. Um, I just go back to what I said at the very beginning about do do good, do well. I think that is something that would really serve all of us. And um, when Council Member uh, Ferguson just made this comment, you know, I it it, it just motivated me to say this. Um, and I can't remember where I read or heard this. So I just I apologize for saying it. I'll just throw it out there, which is give back, give back, give back, give back. And when you feel you can't give back anymore, reach down deep and give back even more because your community and the people around you are relying on you to give back. And I think that to me is really about what all the leaders here have just described is how do you give back when we're all tired, we all don't have enough and we feel we just don't have anything else left in the well, just give back more. So thank you for having me. I appreciate that Dr. Marisha, very powerful uh, concluding remarks there. We must give back as leaders. Mr. Yaffe, I, I think we missed you for your final thoughts as well, but I think you might have said a few things already. I right. did, thank you. Appreciate it. So I, I guess uh, we are towards the end of our uh, Leadership 2.0 series roundup for the year. I uh, really appreciate everybody's time and con contributions. Uh, we all look up to you as leaders and there's a lot to learn from everyone here on this panel. And I think uh, we'll continue wearing this uh, servant leadership hat uh, that's what we all uh, needed, especially in times of crisis. I know this is uh, not all pandemics are permanent. Uh, this is definitely uh, temporary. And I think we are going to get through this in the, in the most positive manner. Thanks again and appreciate everybody's time. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kashan. Thank you. Welcome to Leadership Series 2.0, a STEM to Innovate initiative. Leadership 2.0 is about empowering yeah. community members, inspire to learn from the guest members, and learn from their perspectives on leadership in their respective roles. True leaders lead by example. They wholeheartedly teach, passionately coach, influence with people, not over people, and continue to excite and inspire all. Stay tuned for the upcoming guest on STEM to Innovate's Leadership Series 2.0.
that means you are so uniquely created out of 7 billion. So don't tell me you don't have a purpose. Welcome to Leadership Series 2.0, a STEM to innovate.